83. The simplest amino acid is glycine, which is H2NCH2CO2H. The common feature of amino acids is that they contain the functional groups, an amine group, which is NH2, and a carboxylic acid group, which is the CO2H. An amino acid can function as either an acid or a base. For glycine, the acid strength of the carboxyl group is about the same as that of acetic acid, which is CH3CO2H. And the base strength of the amino group is slightly greater than that of ammonia, which is NH3. Now we're at letter B. Write the Lewis structure of glycine when this amino acid is dissolved in water. And then hint, consider the relative base strengths of the NH2 and the CO2 minus groups. Okay. So, first things first, I already have a drawing of what glycine looks like. Now, if you don't know where this came from or why we labeled this amine a base and why we labeled this carboxylic the acid component, always go back to letter A. This one is letter B, and if we just go back to watch letter A, this will make completely more sense. So, we already drew this out, we labeled the components. Now, all we have to do is we just have to see what this compound looks like when it is dissolved in water. Okay, so remember, water is H2O, and on the scale of acidic or basic, right, water is neutral. Now remember, since you are neutral, water can act as either an acid or a base, right? It's amphiprotic or amphoteric. We saw that in a couple of chapters ago, I think the acid and base chapter. So water can act as an acid or it can act as a base depending on what it's reacting with. Well, bring in glycine. There are two components of glycine. One component on the left is the basic component and one component on the right is the acidic component. So the first thing is, I'm just going to um, copy this just so that we don't have to waste time rewriting it. And actually, actually, yeah, I'm just going to copy the whole thing and then I'm just going to get rid of the words. So there we go. I'm going to get rid of the word amine because that's really irrelevant and the word carboxylic. The only thing that we care about is that this component right here is the base side and this component is the acid side. Now, keep in mind, when you're dissolved in water, you don't just have one water. You have like millions of water molecules. So as one water molecule is going to be interacting with the left side of the molecule, another water molecule will be interacting with the right side of the molecule. And they have to match up. Remember, no two acids react together and no two bases. One has to be the acid and one has to be the base. So if this amine is the base component, this water is going to act as an acid. And if this carboxylic acid is literally an acid, the water is going to act as a base. So in this case, we see that water, two different waters, are going to act differently because they're going to be reacting with different components on the molecule. So now, let's just get rid of this little highlight here, and let's just say, well, what, what does a base do? Well, remember, acid-base world, like last chapter, the bases, Bronsted-Lowry, will always accept a hydrogen. So it's going to take a hydrogen from the water. And it can do that because it has two lone pairs. The lone pairs is what makes the bond. So water has a hydrogen. This has a lone pair. The nitrogen's like, hey, I'm going to take you. Thank you. I got, I got a lone pair. So I can make a bond. And now you have one more hydrogen. And since the nitrogen lost one electron, right, now it only has four, it had five, or you can do the formal charge, you will see that this nitrogen is now a positive charge. Now we got to go and do the base side. So I'm just going to get rid of this. And now, well, what do acids do? Well, acids give up a hydrogen. The base takes the hydrogen. And the oxygen has two lone pairs, if we actually drew this Lewis structure out, that will grab that hydrogen. And remember, when you grab a proton, a proton is a hydrogen, um, you don't take any electrons. 
So these two electrons here, the bond will just break, but the electrons have to go somewhere. So in this case, the acid donates the hydrogen. This hydrogen now goes, whoop, this hydrogen now goes with the water, making it H3O plus, but nobody cares, right? We just care about what glycine's doing. And this bond breaks. These two electrons go back to the oxygen because the oxygen still wants a octet. And now, if we do the formal charge on this oxygen, it gained one electron, it gained this red one, so it's a negative charge. Negative means that you gained. And now I can just erase this and erase this because this is the ion. These are called sphitter ions. Um, and this is really, really, really important for when you get up to biochemistry. So I'm actually kind of glad that they, you know, you know, we touch based on a little bit of amino acids because amino acids is the building blocks for protein, which we are going to get into when we touch on biochemistry, especially when you touch on it in your class. So hopefully by then we will have videos for biochem as well. But before that, this is the answer. So woohoo. And that's it. Oh boy. Let me just bring down that hydrogen. And then there we go. Okay. What do you think? I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you guys are having a great day out there. Let's keep uh, studying hard and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.